saying to back up everything I'm saying, and I'm through talking. <laughs> dramatic. You know, I thought he could have gotten further up the court. There's no question this thing's good. Almost a second to go. Dievendorf with a three at the end of the half. Wow. Anywhere. How's it going? Welcome to Alumni Talk Podcast. I'm brand new podcast from the Alumni Basketball League. I hosted myself, Ricky Goins. I'm the director of team operations for the league. Um, you definitely can visit us on ablballing.com, which is our website, uh, at ablballing, which is our Twitter, Instagram, at the ABLUSA. Um, and then we're also setting up the podcast on Apple Podcasts, so you can hear it there from an audio perspective. We're joined today by Syracuse legend Eric Devendorf, um, who's still very engaged with the program, um, excellent ball player in the Big East. So we want to just Talk to him a little bit today about, you know, not just what his what he's going to be bringing to the ABL, but also um, kind of his background. And, and it's exciting to have you, man. So just kind of getting started off, like talk about, you know, how you started playing, leading up to high school and, and what that kind of looked like. Yeah, so uh, well, I'm from Michigan, uh, from Bay City, Michigan. Uh, man, I, I grew up early loving the game. You know what I mean? I fell in love like, you know, seven, eight years old. And then and I took it and ran with it, man. It was every, it was the everyday thing for me. So uh, I was pretty good at a young age, getting recruited, um, you know, pretty highly. And I actually committed to Michigan State at first. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I, I committed to Michigan State. Uh, and how the whole Syracuse thing came about was I was at a game in, at Michigan State at Breslin Center. They were playing Syracuse 2003. And this is the national championship year for uh, for Q's. They had Melo, G Mac, Hakeem, you know, uh, Josh Pace, Billy Elin, all those guys. Uh, you know, I'm, so I'm watching the game. I'm, I'm I'm watching how they play, getting up and down. Uh, and I tell my AAU coach, man, I, I want to see what's up with Syracuse. Like it's just the style of play. It fit me, you know. So, uh, you know, fast forward a week later, you know, I decommitted from Michigan State called Syracuse. They came down to Detroit where my AU team uh, at the time, Michigan Hurricanes, that's where we practiced. Watched us practice. Coach Beheim, uh Coach Troy Weaver, uh, who was from the uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, now the general manager for the Pistons, they they were there and just offered me a scholarship. He was like, hey, you want to come? And I'm, you know, it was a no-brainer uh, announced in July. So that's how that whole uh, Sarah, Syracuse piece came to, um, came into play. And, um, you know, for my senior year, I was, uh, I went to Oak Hill, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I went to Oak Hill and then they already have that Syracuse, um, I guess lineage, right. As far as, you know, Mello, Billy Elin, uh, Deshaun Wright. So now we got, uh, the young fella Judah Mintz up there, um, mm -hmm. uh, by Musicata. So, you know, it, it's a lot of guys that went to Oak Hill, and then eventually went to Syracuse. So it all it all just made sense, man. You know, and um, you know, being able to play um, for a historic university, a Hall of Fame coach, uh, it, it was definitely a blessing. So who who was on that AAU team with you? Any any other D one guy? In the Michigan oh, Hurricane. Yeah, yeah, the Hurricane. It was um, so Wilson Chandler, um, who was you know thirteen year NBA vet, uh, went to DePaul. Uh, Jabari Curry ended up going to DePaul. Mm -hmm. um, we had Goran Sutan at the time, like Michigan State, um, you know, who else? Andre Ricks, Western Michigan. So, all you know, we had mid-majors, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, spread out. But uh, the team was mostly made of guys from Detroit. You know, I was I was from Bay City, and then you had Saginaw, Flint. You had a couple guys from there. Um, but that's about an hour and 15, hour and 20 from Detroit. Everybody else is from Detroit. So the talent you know, it was really good on, on our AAU team. We had guys that, 
that could really play. So, um, yeah, we, we have a, um, my, I have a lot of family in Saginaw, Michigan. So I've never okay. been there, but I'm definitely familiar with, um, uh, and it's some, it's definitely some athletes up there. So, I mean, you, you got the Syracuse, um, you know, you was, you were all Big East rookie. Um, what was that first year in the Big East light? And how also was it, uh, playing for, um, Coach Boheim? Um, you know, one of the great coaches we've ever seen. What was it like when you, you know, because when coaches recruit you, it's different, right? I mean, you, you can't do nothing wrong, but then you walk in that first practice, it's like, oh, man, who is this guy? So what was it getting used to playing with him and just being able to play right away in the Big East? Yeah, so for me, uh, going back to my AAU, my time with the uh, the Hurricanes, like my coaches was, like these guys were like already like fiery in your face. dude. Like they, they, they hitting you in your chest, like, to getting you ready like in your face like so i i had that type of coaching growing up like guys was on you like yelling at you you know making sure you was on your stuff you know what i mean and, and made us compete hard like it made me you know play with that edge like i always had an edge when i was when i was on the court when the whole kid prepare me that was like really college before college so when i got to syracuse I mean, I, I had that even more confidence. I didn't need it, but I had more because I've already went through it. Like playing with, I play with KD, uh, you know, Kevin Durant at Oak Hill, Ty Lawson, uh, well, Jamont Gordon, Casey Rivers. So I, I've always played with high level guys my whole life. You know what I'm saying? So I was used to that that level of competition. So when I went, when I got to Cuse, it was like, all right, next next up. You know what I mean? It, the same stuff. And then and Coach saw that in me. He saw that confidence. Um, so that allowed me to to play early, contribute early. Um, you know, I was freshman year starting in the backcourt with with Jerry McNamara, who was a you know All American at the time, had a national mm -hmm. championship. Um, learned a ton from him, uh, but but again, like I had that that chip on my shoulder every time I went on the court. Like I was competing at a high level. I might not, I might not have been like the most athletic, the fastest, the strongest, but. I was always competing at a high level. Like it didn't matter who was in front of me. I was right at your chest. Like I, I love to go to the rim and, and attack. You know, if you if you left me open on the perimeter, I could knock it down. So I think that really helped me that mindset throughout my whole career. You know, it, it, it allowed me to score a lot of points, win a lot of games, um, be a part of some really special moments. You know, we're talking about the six overtime game, one of the, you know, in my mind, the greatest college basketball game of all time, you know, and, you know, to be a part of that, to have an impact in that game, um, you know, a crucial moment in that game, it was, uh, it was pretty cool, man. So yeah, that mindset, it really helped me um, have a lot of success, you know, during my time at Q's. So what, so what, you know, I heard you say you spent the, and I, I was, I missed that. No, I did know you were on Cole Hill. I forgot you were there with Ty and Katie. So what was yeah. it like, like being in projects with them every day? You know, us DMV guys, you know, we bring a different energy. Uh, when we go out of town. So what was it like just being around them every day and just, you know, seeing what, you know, what they became to, you know, what was that like? Yeah. So they were both like a year younger to me. So they came mm -hmm. junior year and I know Ty ended up staying two years at Oak Hill and then KD. Mm -hmm. Turned her back to Montreal. Yeah. yeah. Montreal was there. So, uh, but I remember, man, my first time going up there, and my, you know, my uh, parents dropping me off. Uh, we drove from Michigan, and, you know, I go in the gym, and at that time, you know, you didn't see, you didn't see like 6'10", 6'11", guys hand <laughs> shooting it, so, you know, a 6'11", guy, back to the post, he, that's what, that's what the game was back then, more so, you know, and then I walk in the gym, I see this 6'10", dude shooting, handling it like me, you know what I'm saying, like, with my, with my skill level, and then, you know, uh, Ty Lawson, you know, six foot like pit bull coming down the laser, lane. Laser fast. Yeah. Oh, laser fast. So, again, like I, I, I've, I was used to the competition, but I mean, this, this was a whole nother level. Even from that, you know what I'm saying? Like these were the best players in the country playing on one team. You know, you know, eight, nine, uh, ten Division One guys. So, you know, that first time we, that open gym, I just remember like, man, this is a whole nother level, and it made me, it motivated me. Cause I was, I already had like, I was the type of guy I had that dog in me already. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you put a dog around other dogs, I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So that experience at Oak Hill, um, like I said, it, it prepared me. It was college before college. No, I mean, it's, and it's, um, 
you know, when people think about Oak Hill, you think about some of the greats that went there. And I think Coach Smith just retired, right? Like, was it last year he so just we, retired? So we, we just went down to his retirement party in Charlotte like two months ago. Yeah, I had seen that, man. It's just amazing, like, the sustained success that uh, Oak Hill has had, man. And, you know, as a kid, if, you, if you're able to go to Oak Hill, that's a, you know, that's a big deal, you know, in terms yeah. of trajectory of your career. Now, going into the Big E, so – how was that first team you was on? I know you played with McNamara, a couple of those guys. Like, how was that team? How good were you guys? So, I mean, talent-wise, we were, like, we could hang with anybody in the country. Talent-wise, we ended up actually winning that Big East tournament that year. We uh, we had an unbelievable run, 2006, where GMAC, we won four games in four days. GMAC played incredible. You know, it was, so it was me, GMAC, Terrence Roberts from Jersey, uh, Demetrius Nichols, who's from Boston, and then big uh, Daryl Watkins from another Jersey guy. And then we had Louis McCrossey come up. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, my freshman class, Renze Anawako, he was from, you know, he's from That's the my boy, man. We was on a flight together the other day. So look, months ago. That was my roommate all four years. That's like that's like my guy. You know what I mean? One, one of my really good friends. So... I mean, the talent we had on that team was crazy. And the crazy thing is, the last game, the last regular season game, we go to at DePaul, worst team, worst team in the Big East. We lose by like thirty-five at DePaul, and this is before we go into the. And then after that, we go run off four straight games, win the Big East champ. So we had a, our team was like really up and down, but the talent was there. You know, if we put it together, you know, we could be anyone. Like we beat. That that run, we beat Cincinnati the first game, Devin Downey, James White, um, Eric Hicks, Bulldog. I don't know if you remember Eric Hicks. He was a Bulldog at Cincinnati, just just huge. Then we go beat uh, number one ranked in the country, UConn, Marcus Williams, Rudy Gay, Josh Boone, Rashad Anderson, Hilton Armstrong, Denim Brown, crazy. Because they, they ended up being the number one seed that year, right? Yes. And, Got upset they, by by Mason in the by uh, George Mason in the in final Elite Eight, yeah, in Elite Eight. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But that I mean, those guys I just named six pros, you know, on, on, on one team. So and then we beat them, and then we go, we play Georgetown the third game. Roy Hibbert, uh, Brandon Bowman, Ashanti Cook, yeah. uh, Jonathan Walsh, like all these teams, all, all these teams and names I mentioned. These guys could play. You know, and then last game we beat we beat uh Pittsburgh in the championship. Carl Krauser, Aaron Gray, Levon Kendall, uh, uh, Ronald Ramon shooting that thing like we. Was, so Sam, like, was Sam Young? Was Sam Young still there? Sam Young was a freshman. Like he was, yes, he, my he was my class. But you know, we had the talent to run to beat those teams right there. Those were the, the top Big East. So you know, we had a down team, but that year it was fun. We, we had some some good times so so when you look at your career at syracuse what you know what, what you know you, you definitely remember there what, what what's your just your overall picture of how it went what would you have done differently you know what what's your what's your what's your to sum up your career sir syracuse how would you sum it up oh grateful and you know grateful i mean i had i had a lot of ups and downs like off the court you know i, I got suspended i got in trouble but like I can't, uh, it happened how it happened. And then I'm here because of all of that, like all, all the experiences, all the situations I was in, put me in the position I'm in here right now, all the learning experiences, mistakes I learned from. Yeah, I was a, I was a, a young man growing and learning and it, you know, we're thrust into the spotlight, um, you know, at a young age and, and you're going to do some, some things that will, you know, be put out there. And, um, you know, I made mistakes. I learned from them. But on the court, oh, man, like, just had so much fun. You know, play with, with pros. Uh, you know, you know, one particular team, um, you know, myself, Johnny Flynn, Paul Harris, Andy Routon, Arenzi Anawaku, um, who else? Khrushchev, Ojanat. Uh, that was the 2009 year when, when we played the 6-0-T game, you know. So, uh, and then, you know, playing for Coach Beheim. And, and I'm pretty lucky because, you know, I, I think of it like this. I went to Oak Hill, played for a Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. And then I get to go to Syracuse and play for another Hall of Famer. So I was able to learn from two of the best to ever do it, you know, to ever, 
you know, coach basketball. So at, at really at any level, I don't care. Like those guys could have took jobs at, at any level. It's just, they were comfortable where they're at and they could do what they want to do. You know, they built it. So um, I was, I was definitely, you know, blessed to learn from those guys and um, you know, the career I had at Syracuse, I'm just grateful for it, man. I, you know, I've done a lot of stuff there. And it's, and it's great to hear that because I, I deal with, especially in the alumni space, a lot of athletes that had great careers at their schools, but maintain no relationship at all, almost feel like they never played there. So yeah. how have you been able to keep this strong relationship with your alma mater that they can support things you do, get behind? And we're going to get into a couple of things you're doing, but like, how have you been able to maintain that relationship with your university? Well, I think it really all starts with Coach Beheim. Mm. I mean, the, the the unique thing about Syracuse is, you know, he, he's been coaching there for almost 50 years, right? So mm-hmm. you talk about Roosevelt Bowie, who started it, you know, all the way back to, you know, you know myself. We've had the same guy, the same coach. Mm-hmm. We all, you know, can have, you know, st- crazy stories about how he is, you know, how he was back then, how he wasn't. You know, I could do it with the, with the young fellas now. You know, oh, I can relate to it. I remember when he did that type of thing. You know what I mean? So that's unique because you don't have that really anywhere else. I mean, I think, you know, Tom Mizzo comes to mind at, at Michigan State as far as, you know, that type of longevity. But that's even – coach even has him 30 years on, on Tom Mizzo. You know what I mean? So, you know, Syracuse is, is a one-on-one as far as that goes, and he really builds um, and makes it feel like family. You know, every all the events we go back to, whether it's camps or clinics or uh, signings, whatever it is, you know, D.C., Derek Coleman, Dave Bing, Billy Owens, like – those are my big brothers right there. You know what I mean? Lawrence Moten. Like that's, know, that's my guy. Yeah. yeah, my guys. And, you know, we're talking about a lot of D.C. guys, you know, like it, it's good people, you know, and, and and you could feel like I first time I met those guys, they made me feel like I, I've known them for 10 years, you know, and, yeah, and, 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 I, and, I, and I don't think we'll see that again. I think it's too much personal no. coaches to win. I think the role that the ADs have taken and just trying to make it about them. It's different. I don't know if you ever see that again, you know. So just um, talk about a little bit, and I know you've overseen the TVT team, just some of the alumni things you've done um, and that you're working on. I know you you guys won the TVT. What was it? Uh, the year, guys... not this year, but the year before. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so how, what was that like? Oh, man. So um, I was a part of the TBT uh, with Bayheim's Army probably seven years, I think. I think seven years. So right from the, like, they did it one year, and then from that year on, I was in it every year, you know. And, and it's crazy because I wasn't playing professional uh, during that time. And, you know, the TBT, that's it's high-level competition. Like, dudes mm-hmm. is getting after it, you know. So, excuse me, we playing against pros every single year. And then that really gave me my itch. Like, every year I'm like, dang, I need to go back and play again because we're I'm playing in that, representing – I feel like I'm playing for Syracuse, you know. <laughs> I'm playing well. Fans are coming, making you feel like it's Syracuse again. So that's, again, like the fans. Like we, we didn't talk about the fans. Like how, if you ever been to Syracuse, the community of Syracuse, like you you could in, stay there for a weekend, week, been around like sporting events, you could understand. Like this is what they they lock in on, their basketball. Like wintertime, this is what it is. Like right now, football, this is – but, you know, this is what it is. But it's always – the support is always there. So if, if once you once you are locked in and played on a team, community has you forever. So we're, you, we're with the ABL. We're looking to lock in on Syracuse Georgetown alumni game, which I think will be amazing. The Dog Talk uh, team by Chris Wright. I think he probably played against him in the yeah in, in the Big East. Um, he built a solid team. I think they're those guys are friends. We're talking about the Jeff Monroe, I mean, Greg Monroe's. Um, and those guys are, 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 you know, they're, they're locked in, man. They destroyed Merlin. Um, and they can't wait to get their hands on you guys. Um, yeah. so I think that's going to be big for 2023. Just, you know, what does that Syracuse Georgetown rivalry mean? And, you know, how, how formidable do you think? I don't know if you've seen some of the film of that game. I definitely can supply you with, with that for a scouting report. Um, but like, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you, what excites you about the potential of playing Georgetown in a, in a, in an alumni game? Well, I mean, that's, that's, the biggest rival of all time for us. I mean, it's, it's Syracuse and Georgetown and it goes back to, you know, when Patrick Ewing was, was, was playing in the eighties. I mean, those are the kind, you know, you think about the, the big East, you think about Syracuse, Georgetown, Villanova, those are kind of the 
who mm -hmm. started it, you know what I mean? And um, I, I remember playing Georgetown in, you know, in college and just, it was different. That game was different every other, it doesn't matter if the team is, is terrible or the, it doesn't matter. Like that game right there could, it's almost a make or break for your season. You know what I mean? As far as, you know, the fans, the fans are looking at it. So, uh, you know, coach is different. He, he's a little bit, you know, a little bit more pep in his step. So that, <laughs> you know, that game right there, that was special, man, to be able to play in, in a few of those, to go there and play at Georgetown and obviously in the dome. Um, that, that was something special to be a part of. And then, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, make it happen um, with these guys, you know, who are now pros, you know that's awesome, man. It's it's a lot of nostalgia for a for, lot of it, yeah. For Syracuse yeah. fans, you know, if anyone, like I said, who knows Syracuse fans in the community, they're gonna come and and support a hundred percent. So, um, you know, they'll definitely come and and uh, it'd be talking trash about Georgetown, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so, what, so and, and what and what yep. makes it so good for this area is, um, in my and you know, I remember Georgetown being good, but the generation before me. Uh, and after me, I'm sorry, they don't remember Georgetown really being relevant. So this is always exciting for the brand. Um, just one last question for you. What, what do you have going on now, maybe outside of like that arena that you want to tell people about that they may can get behind you and support? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've been doing uh, my business, ED23 Hoops, uh, probably for about three and a half years. Um, so we do cl camps, clinics, um, individual group, team workouts. Um, we do a lot of community and charity events. Um, I have my own AAU program where we have eight teams, uh, five boys, three girls that I run out of there. Um, upcoming now, we'll, we'll do a, a turkey drive November 19th, um, handing out you know, 200 to 250 turkey dinners, and that, that'll be our fourth year of doing it. Uh, so a lot of different stuff so I, out of the ED23 hoops. I, you know, I got a podcast, um, you know, called The Scores Table. Um, you know, you can check that out as well. You know, I'm just doing a lot of SU guys, just kind of, you know, raw, raw stories inside the locker room, what's going on, all that, you know, fans eat that stuff up. So they do. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of different stuff going on out of the ED two, three hoops, um, having fun with it, man. And, and, and just, you know, staying in, in the game and, and what I really love. Appreciate having you, man. Thanks again. I look forward to building this Syracuse uh, Georgetown game and rivalry, reestablishing it with you. Um, so that's it for us here at Alumni Talk. Um, again, visit the website, abloballing.com, abloballing on Twitter. I'm um, on Instagram and then the, at the ABL USA on, um, on Twitter. Uh, thanks to my brother, Inspired Films, for producing this podcast. Um, and we'll be seeing you around, man. We appreciate having you. Uh, man, I appreciate you.